In today's video, Wonder Woman gets a limited release as we have a look at the new Beast Kingdom Justice League Wonder Woman limited edition figure. Diana gets a slightly new color costume change in this limited edition Wonder Woman Dynamic Action Hero product code DAH0012SP. I guess the first thing we will want to do is figure out how tall Wonder Woman stands. So we'll put the tape measure up to the top of her head. That's as good of a place as any. According to the Measuretron 5000, the figure stands at 7.4 inches in height. In centimeters, let's go ahead and swap that over to centimeters. You're looking at 19 centimeters exactly. She does come with a display stand, which is actually the same stand as what we've seen with the other Beast Kingdom Justice League figure releases. Actually, for that matter, all the other Beast Kingdom releases have had this shape and color, for the most part, of display stand. The only thing that has changed is whatever the series it's taken from has been put on the top here, whether it be Batman v Superman, or in this case, Justice League is featured on the top here. And Wonder Woman is featured on the front. Here, and not quite raised, but it does feel like it's slightly more lifted lettering than the base itself, just the way it was printed in place. It is a, ab absolutely what you could probably see here, a magnet to fingerprint. So you might find yourself just kind of taking a, a cloth and just kind of wiping that down from time to time. Other figures will also have this as well. Wonder Woman comes with this adjustable clear neck on the top, which as you can hear, has a very strong ratcheted joint down the bottom. I wish companies would adopt using a ratcheted joint like this because it certainly makes the figures a little bit more stable, especially if you're gonna have her in dynamic poses. The last thing you certainly would want is for the adjustable neck to let you down. With this being a strong ratchet as it is, I don't feel like it's ever gonna really let me down. This does swivel left and right, almost did drop it. This just pegs into the top here. And because it also pegs in, this swivels back and forth and the clips here, the waist clips, will clip around Wonder Woman's waist. Again, we've seen this with other of the Beast Kingdom releases. I'm certainly glad that they incorporate this for this particular limited release of Wonder Woman, because if you want to display all the figures, as I certainly do, I would like to have them with consistent display stands, and luckily this one has one as well. Then the figure gets a series of interchangeable accessories, depending again how you want to display the figure. You might want to say display the figure with the Sword of Athena, which she does come included with, which I might also add is done with die cast metal. So it does feel a little bit heavier than just a standard plastic accessory. It is done here in a very almost dull gray. You can see that there is some Themyscarian scripture here in the middle, as well as the symbol up at the top, which matches that of the shield. I'll show you that in a second. Overall, a really neat looking sword. I believe we did get this one before, but again, it's nice to have that included. It slightly gets, I think, a different dark, slightly different shade in the hilt. The hilt is done here in a blue with some matching 
well, matching here and here in metallic gold. She also comes included, I just previously mentioned it, she does come included with the shield, which has the same crest marker there on the front. Gloriously sculpted here, you can see how it would have been forged, and it's been banded on the outer edge there in, in almost a muted gray, and then a metallic gold on the inner band. We flip it around, and the underside is done in, at least painted here in black, you got the gold band in the inner center there, as well as the straps that are going to go around her forearm. I'll show you that in a second. Nice looking shield. Again, all the things we really did get before. The figure comes with not one. Let me grab the other one. There's two. Two versions of the Lasso of Truth. One is just a, like, wrapped up. One of which it's going to go right there. Show you that in a second. Or you could really, I guess, in a way, hold, have her holding it too if you just want to have the wrapped up lasso gripping in her hand. If you want something a little bit more dynamic though, Beast Kingdom also gives you a translucent version of the, of the lasso, which kind of gives it a little bit more of a glowing look to it. It is translucent plastic, so mileage may vary as to how far out you could stretch this. But it's again, a nice little touch, nice little bonus that they include with it. She also comes with a series of relaxed hands, a pair of relaxed hands, two, actually, that makes up a pair, and she comes with a pair of gripping hands. Let me just, uh, well, let me just say this, these are close-fisted hands, the open gripping hands have already got into her, her limbs here. I just want to tell you, though, when you do get her out of packaging, she does come with gripping hands, or the you know, fisted hands. There's nothing really overly exciting about these because you really can't do anything with them. Uh, defaulted, I'll usually swap then to, which I've already done, to gripping hands, or at the very least, might do a gripping hand and then a relaxed hand on the other. Again, you get three variations of the gripping, three variations of the different types of hands. I just usually opt for the ones that are currently in her socket. Let's talk a little bit about Wonder Woman. I'm just going to move the accessories just out of the way here and talk a little bit about the figure. The one thing that did stay behind, however, is the lasso. You'll probably see at the beginning of the montage, at the beginning of these reviews, this particular Wonder Woman, I couldn't get to be holstered. It's supposed to take, it's this little peg right here, it's supposed to fit into the hole. And a lot of times it's easy to get in if there's nothing in there. If you do have the holst, if you have the lasso holstered, there's just there's too much for it to get around to peg into place. Gluing is certainly one workaround to that. I wish they had used some other method of pegging this into place. Even when you do get the peg, what you believe successfully into that hole there, it just doesn't stay long enough. It pops itself back open. So I mean, you could just kind of hang it like this but it doesn't certainly have the finished presentation that you probably would want. So just something I wanted to mention before we get into knee deep into this figure, which I have to admit, I very much like this version of Wonder Woman. I don't think there's much that has changed to it, at least from a sculpt standpoint, but believing that the head and the body are exactly the same re reuses that we have gotten before. What has, however, been swapped out is this glorious new metallic coloring, which looks very similar to something that Wonder Woman would be sporting in, like, for example, New 52 costumes. Even though New 52 Wonder Woman didn't have the additional blue, it certainly does remind me as well of the New 52 costume, or certainly it also reminds me of, of the Justice League uh, animated films Wonder Woman, in which she would have also sported colors similar to this. But the body is pretty much exactly what we had gotten before with the Batman v Superman release of Wonder Woman. Here, however, though, up here would have been her flesh upper torso, now have been swapped out for this dark navy color. In fact, the colors really are only three. You get the navy of the blue, you get this glorious metallic cranberry color, and then the only other colors are on here that are accenting it is this nice metallic silver, which makes up the gauntlet, which makes up the forearm bracelet that she sports here. Of course, the crest at the top of her bodice and the lower area by just above her skirt. But there's not really anything that has been changed other than just coloring. And it goes to show adding a little bit of extra color, or at the very least, a very different swapped out color really make the figure look like it's something brand new and something we have not seen before. 
I'm loving the color scheme here. And I'm not probably just saying that because I was so fond of the new 52 colors or the costume that Wonder Woman sports, but definitely looking at those colors and that costume probably has something a little bit more of a bias than feelings when it comes to this release of her. For her head sculpt, don't think it's that much different than, if anything, it probably is the exact same head sculpt as what we had before. I don't unfortunately have the Beast Kingdom Wonder Woman present at the time of looking at this one that I could do a side-by-side -side comparison. But I certainly would encourage you guys, if you wanted to go back and have a look at my other Beast Kingdom reviews, there's a whole playlist just for that. I personally think the head sculpt is quite pretty. I don't know if I would say it looks a lot like Gal Gadot, but at the very least, it does, it does certainly look like a pretty Wonder Woman, especially when you've got colors like this. It's easy to take the figure and now slapping new color scheme on it. You can really separate her out from the cinematic universe and really look at her as just being a really attractive looking Wonder Woman. Again, really nicely detailed in the face. Now the silver uh, of the uh, the top there, Tiara, I'm just trying to remember the, the tiara there is done up at the top there, really nice in silver, and you've got the corresponding cranberry color making its way up there as well. Looks like there's a little bit of airbrushing that they've added around the areas of her eyes. Her face, for the most part, is kept relatively simple and relatively soft. It works quite well that there's not excessive amounts of makeup on her, especially in the lips, like the lips are kept relatively light, relatively pink. Speaking a little bit about that airbrushing, she gets a lot of it actually in the shoulder area. You can see it more so when you tilt the, the arms up, that on the under area, around the armpit area, if you will, it's a lighter color. Up at the top of the shoulder, she gets a little bit more of the pink airbrushing on the top. It's just a nice transition between the two. Again, there's really not much different between this one and the one that they released before, but I really like the fact that they're taking existing figures that I personally have felt worked well and have given it a brand new coat of paint. Talk a little bit about, uh, talking a little bit about her shield, we can go ahead and just pop the hand out. Go ahead and take the shield and we can slide it just onto the forearm here. It doesn't give you a whole lot of clearance to get the hand in place, but it's enough that if you pry the hand open, you can still clamp it onto the shield. In fact, it actually might even be easier for you to take the hand, put it into the the opening there like that and then go ahead and take the forearm slide it through and then just meet it meet it almost three quarters of the way just attach it to the hand once again which again just involves just readjusting lining up the ball joint and pegging into place like that didn't quite didn't quite get that in place there we go and she's got her shield in hand. She doesn't really have a place on the back where she can store the shield. There isn't a clip or anything like that. I suppose the other place where you could keep the sword if you don't want to have it, if you don't want to have it kind of tucked in the back like this, you could also just slide it through the little slot here on the side. And she can support her shield that way as well. Now the dynamic action heroes are superposable. We'll go ahead and run through that together. Wonder Woman's head rotates all the way around. You may have also thought that with the way that the hair is sculpted, it would limit her posability, but it's just enough clearance. You can see the gap between the bottom of her hair and where her torso lie right there. It's just enough that she can still fully adjust her head all the way around. The head can also tilt back and forth. It can also move up and down. Her shoulders hinge out as well as you can rotate the, them all the way around. She has a swiveling point right where the bracelet attaches right here she doesn't have that but it still swivels in the exact same place she has a hinge in the elbow which also allows the forearm to rotate all the way around and she does also have a swivel in the hand essentially the hand is attaching to her via a ball joint so with the ball joint gets all the benefits that a ball joint would inherit um, she doesn't have anything in the waist just because the way this is all sculpted together however her legs very very easily uh, split as well as they move forward and they move back. She has a swivel that happens at the three-quarter cut of the thigh, right around there, so you can see here. She does also have a double hinge on the knee. Uh, she has a hinge on the foot, which also allows an ankle pivot. You can rotate the feet all the way around, and she does also have toe articulation as well. 
Now, I was already a big fan of Beast Kingdom's Wonder Woman. I personally thought, bang for your buck, it was one of the best Wonder Woman that you could pick up uh, for all the accessories and the superposability that the figure possessed. Now, adding something different to the figure in this color scheme, something that's reminiscent of the new 52, you've got yourself something very special. It's enough to make the figure feel very different. Like, I've already picked up the Wonder Woman and of course looked at her on this channel but now having this figure i feel like i am looking at a brand new different wonder woman even though it's essentially the exact same sculpt it's not the first time that beast kingdom has approached adding new color schemes to their existing figure molds we've already had a look at a couple of examples on this channel of supermans and batmans but i'm really liking this color scheme of wonder woman she's kept still on a relatively realistic yet still very dark color tones the navy has filled out the majority of her body and again, it looks like something that I would have seen from either like the animated DC films like Justice League War or the new 52 Wonder Woman, which is unfortunate that she doesn't have that costume either anymore because that was one of my favorite designs for Wonder Woman. Still, oh, a nice look here for this release from Beast Kingdom. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, now it is unfortunately limited edition so you may have to source this one out online if you're looking to add this one to your collection but if you already picked up the wonder woman from the beast kingdom releases before i feel like this one warrants picking her up a second go around the color scheme is something that i hope the camera was doing justice for justice no pun intended but physically getting her in hand and looking at her in front of you you really can appreciate the time and care that beast kingdom puts into their releases and this wonder woman is no exception to that Today we were having a look at the Beast Kingdom. This was the Justice League product code DAH0012SP. This was the limited edition, very limited edition, color variation to Justice League's Wonder Woman. I'm going to have to find a way to put all of that in the title. That's going to be a very long title. Either way, if you guys wanted to go back and have a look at some of my other Beast Kingdom figure reviews, don't worry, don't fear. There's a playlist just for you. Also, make sure you swing by the homepage when you finish this video and scroll down the sections of videos. See if there's anything that you may have missed along the way. More Beast Kingdom reviews will be coming your way, so certainly stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.